My trapping season this year was epic. I got to spend a lot of time with dad, a lot of time with friends, trapped in three different states, had a lot of good success, and learned a ton about trapping coyotes this year. When you have nothing but mud to work with, what you got to do so we're just going to get some of this out throw it in the bucket and we'll be ready to reset some traps now we are in the post season not a lot of people's thinking about trapping but there are a lot of things that you need to do to get those traps ready for the following year. Make some modifications. We're going to get everything ready. We're going to put up, put them up, get ready to the little. <laughs> so what me and Dad are going to do is we're going to get all our traps out, see what we got. We're going to make a few modifications on the traps we already have. We're going to get new traps that I've ordered ready for, the, for next year and just have a good time in the garage. A lot of you guys out there know that there is a lot of preparation that goes into this, but for that average guy that has gone out there and bought him a couple dozen traps and has been using them on his property, may not know what really is entailed in properly preparing your traps to get ready for the following year or just to get ready for that initial setting of the traps. Post trapping season, I've got a whole bunch of dirty traps, so I got the power washer out. I'm gonna power wash these off and uh, we'll be ready to go. And it's gonna help get a little bit of that rust off of there too, get them as clean as we possibly can. So then we can get them in the garage and really look at them to make sure there's nothing bent, broken, uh, we, need, we might need to replace some J-hooks. See what we're getting into when we go to modify these traps. One thing that I have found after using them this year is if you'll look right there, this is the frame of that trap and it is bent almost in a U. The springs on those four x four traps are very strong and over time they're gonna bend up and we don't want that to happen. We want that trap to last as long as we possibly can because they cost a lot of money. So what we're gonna do is to prevent that is add a base plate and D-ring attachment. You got that here, we're gonna weld them up and what you do with this is you take this J-hook and your anchor off. You go ahead and straighten that out, take it clean out, and you have a, bre a brand new trap right here with everything taken off. So what, what we're gonna do, we got the, you know your flat frame right there. You lay this, what you do is you take your D-ring just like this, and you lay it straight flush with that frame, and then you tack weld the ends, and we'll go ahead and tack it here, here, and we'll go ahead and put one right here to. To mesh all three pieces of this frame. You got that piece, that piece, and then the, the uh, base plate. We'll go ahead and tack it there and then tack it again on the opposite side over here. And that is going to strengthen the trap up greatly. The next thing we're going to do is add a lamination kit. The lamination kit is basically a 316 wire 
that you weld right on the top of the jaw. And what it does is it's flush with the jaw. When you catch that animal, it spreads out the pressure over the paw of that animal. So it prevents the cutting or prevents any kind of damage or any kind of suffering to that animal while it's in the trap. The lamination kits are kind of tricky because you have to line that wire directly flush with the end of your jaw. Well, if you got it too far back, you're not doing anything. If you, if you bring it too far forward, you're pinching more than what that offset jaw would normally do. So getting those, getting the vice grips on there, getting them clamped down in the proper spot takes a little bit of time, but you spend the time, you get it done right, it works fine. It's a little bit of give and take on the lamination kits. You are, you're giving up a little bit of speed on that trap coming out of the ground, but you are improving the holding power while preventing that animal from damaging itself while in the trap. There's going to be a little bit of slag uh, left on the, the lamination kit and on the jaws. You want to go ahead and grind all that stuff off there because you don't want any sharp edges. Nothing going to catch on the fur of that animal when he gets caught. So we grind all that off and uh, basically now we're ready to prepare that trap for next season. All right, now that we have all the modifications done to the trap that we need to do, we've, we've welded on our base plate D-ring attachment, we have welded on our lamination kits, and we have ground everything off of here. Now I need to move to my staking system. And from the factory, these Victor traps come with this double looped chain that's more like a flower pot chain than what I would want on my traps. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. And what I do, you see here's one right here that's still fully intact. We got this and we got our swivel with our J-hooks and then on down to our anchor. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this chain out, which I've already done here. This here, throw this in the trash. You don't need it. And what I've done, is you, I've already done it right here, is I've went down nine links. You can do eight, nine, ten, whatever you want to do, however, however long you think is your best. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the J hook here, a J hook here, and I'm going to attach it right here, and then this end will attach it to the trap. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to double swivel my trap. What I'm doing here is I'm, I'm, I'm decreasing the length of my chain because we've got way too much chain on my old anchors. I think that's going to be plenty of chain and I'm double swiveled. I'm beefed up on my trap. I'm beefed up on my swivels. Shorten my chain. I've got solid chain, good anchor. This trap should last forever if I take care of them right. The final process is dyeing and waxing. First thing we're going to do is we're going to, I got two dozen brand new sets of traps here and we boiled these in a degreaser a couple days ago and I've just left them sit out to rust. And you can see we got a little thin coat of rust on all these traps which is not quite perfect but there's still enough there to let that trap go ahead and take a dye. So we're going to go ahead and pour this dye in my bowl and pot of, in my pot of water right here. We're gonna throw them in there, let them let them go ahead and boil and simmer for right around an hour. It's basically like blue in a gun. The dye, what it does is it penetrates that steel. It's gonna help cover the scent of that steel while it's in the ground, but it also keeps it from rusting. It's you know there's other things that you can dip your traps in. There's trap coat, you know, full metal jacket. This is kind of the old school way of preparing your traps. On these two traps right here, you can really tell a difference between which one has been dyed and which one hasn't. This one here has just been boiled in that degreaser. You can see the fine little film of rust on there. And that trap right there, you can see it took to it really good. Now all we gotta do is go ahead and dip this in my wax and we'll be ready to go. This is, I'm using the black wax from Minnesota Trap Supply. It comes in one pound blocks. I put it in a pan and there's probably seven or eight pounds of wax in this pot. Already melted down. All you do is just dip the trap in there. 
and you got to wait about 15 seconds to get, let that trap go ahead and heat up to the same temperature as that wax because if you just dip that trap in there and pull it out it's going to have a huge coat of wax on it and you don't want that. You want a real thin coat. So you dip it in there and let it sit for about 15 seconds and when you pull it out it's just going to be real shiny dripping off of it. Shake it off a little bit set it out to cool down. The wax is going to keep the trap from rusting. It's going to make that trap really really fast and it's also going to take any scent off of that trap that was on it. It basically encapsulates the whole trap in nothing but wax. We've got all of our modifications done. We've got all of our preparation done. Everything is done for next year. Throw them in a tote, put them in the shed. Next year when trap season rolls around, you can go get them out, throw them in the back of the truck, take your stuff, and stick them in the ground. Y'all didn't honestly think I was gonna get them traps ready and leave them in the barn all year. We're back at it again. a place I go tuck back in the pines where a green field grows my own little paradise I'm thankful for this land and the life that it provides see the measure of a man is what he leaves behind oh, oh take what you need Sometimes you just gotta get on old Chuck. Let him loosen up a little bit. I am what I am. <laughs> if you sit me down, I'm gonna talk like this. <laughs> Get trails in pine plantations, nothing can be better. <laughs> That'd have been good if he hadn't have just bulldozed the camera. <laughs>